In this view, we will be demonstrating the lordotic chest. The lordotic chest should be performed with the patient standing at the upright bucky in the lordotic position with a 72 inch source to image distance and no tube angulation. The lordotic view of the chest shows the apices of the lungs. Our patient is AP, standing at the upright bucky. I'm still using 72 inches. The top margin of the IR will be about three inches above the level of his shoulder. The central ray will be in the mid sternum. We're going to use the lordotic position. That requires him to push his shoulders back against the board and he actually steps his feet out one to two feet. So I'm going to push you back and we're going to have you step out with your feet. Okay, so now we have the central ray in between the sternum. We've got a right marker on the right side. We're going to have him take in a big deep breath. Blow your breath all the way out. Take in another big deep breath. Now hold your breath. Don't breathe, don't move. And the exposure is made. A diagnostic lordotic chest radiograph should be free of motion and rotation and include the clavicles projected superiorly to the lung apices. In this view, we will be demonstrating the lateral decubitus chest. The patient should be lying on their left side or as dictated by pathological conditions with a 72 inch source to image distance and a horizontal beam with no tube angulation. This video will demonstrate a decubitus chest x-ray. This is to show air and fluid levels. Your patient needs to be on their side five minutes prior to taking the exposure so that the air can rise and the fluid will fall. We have built our patient up with this large sponge so that she is higher than the level of the IR. My patient is on their left side. The x-ray tube is now in decubitus, which is horizontal to the floor. So our central ray is mid-sagittal plane and T7, which is the inferior angle of the scapula. I have a right marker indicating the right lung field. We want to make sure that you have 72 inch SID. Patient is gonna take in a big deep breath. She's gonna hold very still. So patient, please take in a big deep breath and blow your breath all the way out. Take in another big deep breath and the exposure is made. A diagnostic lateral decubitus chest radiograph should be free of motion and rotation and demonstrate the entirety of the affected side to include the lung apex to the costophrenic angle. In this view, we will be demonstrating the lateral decubitus chest. The patient should be lying on their left side or as dictated by pathological conditions with a 72 inch source to image distance and a horizontal beam with no tube angulation. For a decubitus chest, our patient is unable to stand. She is on her left side on the stretcher. The stretcher is locked. We have her rolled up as close as she can get to the IR. We have a 72 inch SID, no angle on the x-ray tube. The x-ray will come in her posterior side and it exits the anterior side. So the projection is a PA. We want to use the mid sagittal plane. We're using T7 as our central ray. The tube is set at 72 inches with no angle. I have a right marker indicating the right side. I have shielded the patient and I've made sure that the locks were locked for the stretcher so it does not move. You want to make sure that the patient is in true lateral, that her shoulders are stacked and her arms are overhead. Her hips, knees, and ankles are all stacked. We want her to lie in this position five minutes prior to taking the exposure so that the air will rise and the fluid will fall. And we will take this on second inspiration. The patient will hold very still. We will have her take in a big deep breath and blow your breath all the way out. Take in another big deep breath and the exposure is made. A diagnostic lateral decubitus chest radiograph should be free of motion and rotation and demonstrate the entirety of the affected side to include the lung apex to the costophrenic angle.
In this view, we will be demonstrating an AP chest with the patient semi-erect on a stretcher or a hospital bed. The head of the stretcher should be adjusted to place the patient's chest as erect as possible. With a 72 inch source to image distance and the tube angled caudally to match the angle of the image receptor. For an AP stretcher chest, our patient is unable to stand. I'm going to have my patient lean forward and I'm going to slide the IR down behind her. You want to bring the head of the stretcher up as much as the patient will allow. We have a little bit of a caudal angle so that we are perpendicular to the IR, perpendicular to her sternum. So my patient is small. I have chosen to put the IR in lengthwise. We should see an inch and a half above the level of her shoulders and the light field. We should also see a little bit of light on either side of her. Depending on body habitus, you might need to turn your IR crosswise. We're centered to the mid-sagittal plane. Our collimation should be a 14 by 17, and you want to see a little light field on either side of the patient. We're going to use a right marker on the right side of the patient. We have shielding on our patient, and the breathing instructions are on the second inspiration. We're going to take in a big deep breath and blow your breath all the way out. Take in another deep breath and hold your breath, and the exposure is made. A diagnostic AP chest radiograph should be free of motion and rotation. Include both lung apices, both costophrenic angles. There should be visualization of eight to nine posterior ribs above the diaphragm. In this view, we will be demonstrating a lateral chest with a patient lying on a stretcher. The head of the stretcher should be adjusted to place the patient's chest as erect as possible with a 72 inch source to image distance and no tube angulation. For a lateral chest on the stretcher, our patient is unable to stand. We're going to do a left lateral chest because the heart dips a little more to the left. So we've placed our patient as close as possible to the IR and we're going to use the left side. I've made sure that the stretcher is locked because I have taken the side rails down. I have a lead shield on my patient. My x-ray tube is perpendicular and it is set at 72 inches. I have set the head of the stretcher up as much as the patient can tolerate. I've also placed a sponge behind her back and that helps her stay forward. I have pulled out the hand bar that the patient will be able to put our arms up so they are not in the field of view. We are using the mid-coronal plane and T7 as our central ray. So go ahead and put your arms up over there. And we're going to do this on second inspiration. So please take in a big deep breath and blow your breath all the way out. Take in another big deep breath, hold your breath and the exposure is made. A diagnostic lateral chest radiograph on a stretcher should be free of motion and rotation. Include both lung apices, both costophrenic angles, with the hyalus centered and the sternum in profile. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to visit cloverlearning.com and explore our robust selection of video-based courses, certification exam prep question banks, and continuing education resources. Lastly, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on our latest videos.